But for today, our objectives, I can add and subtract decimals. Now the good news for us is as long as we can add and subtract whole numbers, this works out very well. There's just one extra thing that we need to remember and that's we gotta line up the decimals, that's it. All the other rules, whether they're positive or negative, still apply, but once we know uh, if we're adding or subtracting, just line up the decimals and do it by place values. So as, as usual, there's gonna be something like this on the assignment with these base 10 blocks. Now, if it's a full square like this one, one of these big squares with lots of smaller squares inside, there's 100, this is a 10 by 10 block. That's one full value, one full unit. And then one of these columns, so if you took a column right here and broke it off, you'd have this column, that's a tenth. Now they're showing as uh, point, 0 0.1, rather, which, again, is a decimal. You could write it as uh, 1 over 10. Or the next, this little block right here, that's 0 0.01, which is the same as 1 hundredth, like this. Now I've got the fractions there. Of course, we're not focusing on the fractions today, but um, the, we're, we're going to be focusing on the decimals, of course. So that's why we're looking at them like this. But it's important to know when you look at these blocks which ones you're dealing with. This is not a hundred. This is a value of a hundred hundredths, which makes one. And this would be like ten hundredths, which is kind of like putting a zero at the end of the one right there. Like ten hundredths. Really, we just like to say it is one tenth. After that, they're going to say add these up like this one. Okay, so we're going to add. Be careful because even though this, this symbol is small, they may change it into a minus. I think that's our next problem. So I would look at here, and I'd say, look, we got, uh, in terms of full blocks, I've got... Three and seven. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, let's just, let's just look at the whole blocks, right? One, two, three. And since we're adding, we can actually count these other ones, four and five. Okay, so in terms of whole blocks, we have five full units. Then I would look at my tenths is like 0 0.1. Okay, so how many tenths are, do we have? Again, we're looking at the columns now. So that'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And again, so as we're adding, we would add these other ones, that's 7 and then 8. So in terms of tenths, we have 8 of those. And since it's a decimal, I'm going to put the decimal there. So we've got the ones. There's 5 of those. We have 8 of the tenths total. And now we will add up the hundredths, so that'd be 0 0.01. How many of those are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we'll add these other one, eight, nine, 10, 11. Now, that would be like 11 of these. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this extra one of the hundredths, and of course that's gonna be part of my answer. But since there was 10 of them, I now have an extra 10th with my other eight tenths. So when I combine those, I would have, end up, I would end up having nine of those tenths. So my final answer here is going to be 5.91, or 5 and 91 hundredths. And that's it. That's not, that's not bar notation. That's just, I guess I should have put the plus sign right there, huh? So use this 10 by 10 grid to add decimals. We got 45 hundredths and 29 hundredths. This is a 10 by 10 unit square. So we, we gonna, we're gonna look at 45 of these smaller squares here. And that's gonna help us to find the sum. Now, of course, 45, which I'll do in red, that's, this right here is four of the tenths. That would be four of the columns. So I'm, again, I'm gonna kinda outline these. Technology will help me. One, two, three, four. Okay, now that's the 40. But then, in, in addition to that, we have these extra five, but those are hundredths. So we have four tenths and five hundredths. So now we're going to count five of these hundredths. One, two, three, four, five. And that would give us, I guess I should count that again just because I lost track, but that should do it five. So what I have in red is the same as 0 0.45 or 45 hundredths. Next, let's look at the 29 hundredths. 
So just like we did on that last one, we have two of the tenths. So that's going to be two full columns worth. Okay, so I got these two right here. And even though I didn't shade them all the way, that's okay. And then we have an extra nine of those. So you can count those. But I know I can just leave one off and that's going to be nine of them right there. So this is not a full column. These ones are just shaded poorly by me. Okay. Now I have these separated. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up. I'm going to break up these, these nine into two different pieces. I, I, if I can fill in these five with five of these, then that's going to help me out. There we go. That's broken up. And now I can take these five and fill in that gap right there. Now, of course, this is just one way to do it with modeling. Um, but what I have in purple there is 29 hundredths. Okay. Now, we can, we can conclude this by saying, well, how many of the tenths do we have? And that will give us part of the answer. So we can count these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the tenths, full tenths. I'm going to make that 0 0.7, emphasize that decimal, and then we have these extra four, one, two, three, four. So if we add those two together, we end up with 74 hundredths. All right, now we're subtracting, and yeah, we got some different numbers. So let's, let's look at what we start with, and this is important with subtraction because order does matter. I'm going to start with these values here. Okay, so again, let's let's look at our holes from this number. So I'm, I don't know that I would do it necessarily by, like this, but let's just see what this. Let's see what we got here. So I got uh, one, two, three holes. Okay, now from my second number, this is what I'm taking away or subtracting. We've got one, two holes there. Okay, now what that means is it's kind of like taking three and subtracting the two, and then you end up with one full hole. Now another way to show this is um, say, well, you got uh, you got these two, which are going to some people would say cancel out, but it's they just take them away or they undo each other. I like to say that they zero each other out because you have this one, but then you spend this one. You have this one, then you spend this one. However you want to look at it. Now we can look at the tenths. Okay, so in terms of our tenths, in ter and starting specifically, we've got this one of the tenths. Okay, so that would be 3.1 for now. Uh, and then we look and see, well, how many are we going to take away? You got one, two that you're going to take away. Now here, the problem with this and what we have, because we are subtracting here, is we're taking away more than what we start with. And we can't do that. So now we're going to look at this one and say, well, I need to borrow some from you, please. And hopefully this helps us out. Okay, so this one, now let's, let's give ourselves some space here. I'm going to look at that one as though it were 10 tenths. I'm just going to move that. So I'm going to take the 10 tenths, and I'm going to take... Take away one of those tenths. So what I'm doing right now is I'm taking this shape. Okay, so these, these now, we're, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take uh, this shape and make it into ten of these tenths, right? Not a, I, I'd mistaken that with a hundred. Okay, so that's where this ten comes from. And instead of making it as of one full, I'm going to make it as an extra ten of the tenths. And that's where those... That's where that green one comes from, okay? So now, since that's the case, we no longer have any more ones. So then we'd say 11 tenths minus the 2 tenths. Then you'd end up with 9 of the tenths. Okay, so in other words, once again, this tenth zeroes out, we'll say this tenth right here. And now you're left with just the 9 tenths. He's nine. 
Okay, so let, let's do the hundredths then. So we got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven that we're going to start with. And then we will take away one, two, three, four. So this one, it's okay to subtract because there is enough to subtract. Seven minus four of the hundredths will leave us with three hundredths. And uh, that's going to do it right there. So let's use the model there. One, two, three, four that we took away. It's taking away these four. One, two, three, four. And then we're left with the one, two, three. All right, now subtraction. So this is the same numbers, but now it's subtraction between. We're going to take this 45 hundredths and subtract the 29 hundredths. So let's, let's do the same thing. We're going to highlight our 45 hundredths here. So what I have in red there, this is 45 hundredths, just as we had before, but now I'm gonna highlight 29 hundredths. But since it's minus, I'm gonna have to take away these 29 hundredths. So, I, so I'm gonna highlight these again, but now in purple, nine, okay. So that, that's 29 right there. Okay, now, now the, the purple is taken away from the red. So really what's left over is just what I have in red now left over. So that's, uh, well, this, this one column here would be one full tenth. And then in hundredths, you'd have one, two, three, four, five, six. So this then, the subtraction, we did have the one hundredth. So we'll make that 0 0.1. And then, like I said, we had the six hundredths, one tenth and six hundredths. 16 hundredths, boom, that's it. Okay, now the big difference between what we saw before when this was addition and now this is subtraction is that we, we covered part of what we started with, right? The 45 hundredths we started with, we covered that with the 29 hundredths so that we can see what was taken away. So really, since we took these away, the purple ones away, it really should look something like this, something like this, okay, and again, these, this is still 29 hundredths from the purple, but again, it was taken away, which means we just kind of broke those off and made them go away. All right, so adding and subtracting decimals by place values, we usually do this vertically by lining up the corresponding place values, just like we've done before. The main thing you're going to want to look for on these is the decimal. Find that decimal and line them up, because then you don't have to worry about, am I looking at the tenths, the hundredths, or the ones, or the thousands? Once the decimals are lined up, then everything else will line its, itself up. Now this means as well that your answer should have a decimal that is also lined up, which allows us then to add and subtract by place values. So if my first number has a decimal and the second number has a decimal, we keep those lined up, but even the answer, whether it's a sum or difference, the decimal will still line up. Now you'll notice this section is only for addition and subtraction the rules and the method for multiplying and dividing is different. Although I think we did see some long division, but either way, just know for addition and subtraction, you need to line up your decimals and then everything else is, is gonna be okay. Now, if you have a decimal, let's say like this one was six, uh, maybe like a five, 51.682, okay? And let's say that we were subtracting a different number like 3.4, okay? So some students get confused and they say, well, what do, what do I do with these empty place values? If you need to, because you can and should, just fill them in with zeros. And then that, that may help you to understand where you're at in your place value. So I like to put those there when I do my work. And even if there's, let's say that the second number has more decimal place values than the other one, then again, you're just gonna, you're gonna you, you will definitely need this zero, but if it's the second number, it's not necessary that you put them there, but if it's the first one, it's, it becomes pretty clear because now I have zero minus one. Well, that's not enough. And then would say, well, you got to borrow from that two to make that a 10 kind of thing. Now, I'm not going to do this subtraction. We have enough work to do as it is, but that's just how it sets up, okay? Line up your decimals. If there's missing place values to line up, fill those place values in with zeros. So before, when you did this in, what, Model 1 or 2, uh, there was no decimal to line up. You, you kind of had to figure out where the 1's place value, and then you started from 
right and then kind of list your numbers to the left. Now it's line up the decimal and then fill in, fill in the number as is um, and then fill the second number is, but you line up the decimal. So try this one, perform the indicated operation. Let's see what you guys get. All right, let's see how this is. Now, when I do these, because we do have a positive and a negative, first thing I like to do is just see if my answer is going to be positive or negative, and then we can figure out what actual operation we're going to be using. This it starts as addition, but they're opposite signs. So that means these, these, some of these are going to undo each other, and you're going to be left with some, some signed value. But again, what is the sign? Well, we can see between the two values, it's addition, they're opposites, we have the 26 hundredths, which is positive, and then the 7 and 58 hundredths, which is negative. There's more negatives here than positives, so that tells me right away that my answer will be a negative. Okay? So I like to, I like to determine, no matter what operation, op operation I'm doing, just to, to determine what sign I'm using in, in my answer. So this one's going to be a negative. Okay, that's, that's nice. The signs are opposite, so what you're going to do, you're going to take the big number, seven and 58 hundredths. Now the other decimal is 26 hundredths. Now whether you put the zero there or not is completely up to you. But the signs are opposites, it was addition, which means that these 26 hundredths are going to remove 26 of these 58 hundredths, okay? So we just do this by place value starting on the right there. In the hundredths place value, eight minus six would be two. In the tenths place value, 5 minus 2 would be 3. And remember, I, I didn't do this already, but I probably should have. Remember, the decimals all line up vertically this way. So I have the 3, and then finally in the ones place value, 7 minus 0 is, well, 0. Oh, <laughs> 7 minus 0, 7. There we go. Now, now that's, that's from the subtraction, right? We know all the final answer needs to be negative, so I'm going to write this in as 7 and... 32 hundredths. And that, with the negative specifically, is our final answer. So here's this one. That's negative 13 and 2 tenths plus negative 22 and 6 hundredths. Take a minute to try this one out. And we'll go over it. All right. So this one with those two values. Again, the operation is, is starting as addition. It's addition of a negative. This negative with this other negative which means that if you take a negative and add something that's negative, you're going to get something that's more negative. And again, that just tells me that I know my sign is going to be a negative. So from there, we can take the two values. So we have 13 and 2 tenths. And then we have 22 and 6 hundredths. I'll put the zero there with the two. And since it's going to make it more negative, we're going to add those two values together. This will tell us how negative our answer will be. So by place values, we've got the zero plus the six in the hundredths place value, which is six. In the tenths place value, we've got the two plus the zero, which is two. And again, I forgot to put the decimal in, but I have it there now. All my decimals are lined up. In the ones place value, three plus two is five. And in the tens place value, one plus two is three. Now again, this is just how negative the answer is. So the answer is not positive 35 and 26 hundredths, it's negative 35 and 26 hundredths, which is very different. Okay, so again, all the, rules, all the same rules apply, right? If you're adding negative, you're gonna end up with something more negative, which is why we add the two numbers together. We've seen that already with whole values, but now, um, now we just have the decimals that we need to line up. I perform this indicated operation, 17 and 59 thousandths minus 6 and 996 thousandths. Try this one out, then we'll go over it. Okay, this one, since we're starting with 17 and 59 thousandths, we're subtracting 6 and 996 thousandths. We're subtracting something that uh, is smaller than what we start with, which means in reality we can take these two numbers, 17 and 59 thousandths and just line it up with the second number six and 996 thousandths and just do straight subtraction here we don't need to worry about the sign the sign should be positives because 
We're starting with something more than what we take away. So by subtracting these by place values in the thousands place value, nine minus six is a three, right? Nine minus six. Now over here, I've got five minus nine. And then nine is too big to take away the five. Take away from the five. So I'm gonna look at the next number, which is zero. And it's, we don't have anything to borrow from there. So I've got to look at it as 70. So I'm gonna take that 70 and take one away from it to make it 69 and borrow one from that. Wait, do we have to do that or can so 15 minus 9, again, you can, you can do counting if you need to, but um, that is going to be 6. In the tenths place value, 9 minus 9 is 0. Again, I've got, to, I've got to line up that decimal. Do not forget the decimal in your answer. In the ones place value, 6 minus 6 is 0. Not right. And then drop the 1 in the tenths place value. That right there, the 10 and 63 thousandths, that would be our final answer there. Make this so it's visible. That's it. And yeah, that again, it's not bar notation, it's just copied. Okay, six and four hundred ninety-seven thousandths minus ten and two tenths. Try this one out, see how you do. Okay, so like I said, the first thing we should do on these is look and just see is what is what is our answer mean? Is it gonna be positive or negative? So we look at this six and some change, minus 10 and some change. So we're taking away more than what we have start or what we have to start with, which means that our answer should end up being a negative. Okay. Now again, knowing that it's negative is gonna help us out because then I don't have to worry about negative positive stuff. But then we look, this is taking away what, more than what we start with. We start with the positive, we're taking away more than what we start with there. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that 10.2 or 10 and 2 hundredths, and we're gonna subtract the six and 497 thousandths. Okay, so I'm gonna make that 10 and 200 thousandths, like that. And then I'm ready to subtract. Okay, and this will tell us how negative our difference should be. So again, I would look at this, I, I start in the thousandths place value, zero minus seven. Well, you can't take away 7 from 0, so I, I would need to make that a 10. So there's two ways to do it, and, and I like to look at it as 20 right there because in the next place value, there's a 0, and I can't borrow from nothing. There's just nothing there to borrow from, so I have to look at the next place value, which is 2, but I have to combine it with the 0, or, or that's the way I like to look at it. So instead of it looking at it as 20, I now look at it as 19. Now what you can do if you want, is you can say, well, I'm going to skip the zero and then borrow from the two and then say, well, I'm going to borrow from that two and make this a 10. And then I would borrow one from the 10 in order to make it a nine. It doesn't matter which way you do it. You should end up with the same answer. So now in that thousandth place value, I've got 10 minus seven, which is three. In the hundredth place value, nine minus nine is zero. Oh, okay, so we're, we're now back to the tenths place value, so I need that decimal. But I've got 1 minus 4 right here. Again, 4 is too big to take away from 1, so I'm going to have to increase that 1 into an 11, right? So again, if we, if we, before we get there, we can say, well, I, I borrow from the next place value, but there's nothing to borrow from there, so I've got to go to the next one. And so I borrow from that 1 in order to make Wait, this a 10. Them? So yeah, then, then, then I would say you'd borrow from the 10 to make that a 9, and now that borrows one from the 10 in order to make that an 11. Now that's 11, this is 11 tenths, which is the same as 1.1, but we want to see it specifically in the, hum, in the tenths place value. So 11 minus 4, that's going to be 7. 9 minus 6 is 3, and then of course we used up all the 10s, so there's no more 10s to work with. Now that's how negative the answer is. So that ends up being a negative three and 703 thousandths. All right, translating and operations with operations and equations. So addition, yeah, and, and again, this is, this is something that you may see. Sum added to total is a kind of com uh, a common one. Same with subtraction, minus, maybe remaining or difference is pretty common. What, what you're going to see, and this is you're likely to see these on exams and quizzes, is this kind of stuff, like less than and subtracted from, because they change the order. Okay, so subtraction and division order definitely matters. 
And so if you write them in the wrong order, you've done the wrong problem. So for division, you got some quotients, maybe divide it into. Again, that, this one has an asterisk because it, it switches the order. Uh, maybe per, split it evenly. If there's, or, or now it may not say something like specifically split evenly, but it'll be something like it where they're splitting something evenly, however they word it. Then multiplication, a product, they'll say times. You got to be careful with these ones like doubled is times two specifically, triple is times three specifically, and quadruple is times four specifically. You may see some of those. Of is another indication that you're using multiplication, but be careful because um, sometimes it can be used with some of the other ones. And then, of course, multiplied by is pretty straightforward. Equality is equals the same as totals. And again, this is where you got to be careful. It's, uh, equals is, if, it, if they're saying like it's a total of some sort, then sometimes it's addition, okay? Differences, difference of, quotient of, product of. And this, these ofs, these are where we got to be careful because... If it says difference of, it's not the difference of some kind of multiplication. The difference indicates subtraction. So on this one, you have $18.11 and purchase an item for $9.58. How much money do you have left over? What operation are we using? Yeah, so we're going to subtract. So in this subtraction, it's important to know what we start with. Well, you're starting with the $18.11. So I'm going to take that $18.11. And it says, uh, purchase an item. The purchase, I'm going to say we're going to spend that. Okay, we're going to use it up. And that's $9.58. So you see I've lined up my decimals again. And we are going to use subtraction. So let's subtract. Starting on the right, in fact, let's line up these decimals. In the pennies, or hundredths place value, you'd have 1 minus 8. Again, the 8's too big to take away from the 1, so I'd have to borrow from that one in the tenths place value. Now it's 11 hundredths minus 8 hundredths, which would end up being 3 hundredths left over, or 3 pennies. Then in the tenths place value, or the dimes, you have 0 dimes minus 5 dimes. Well, you don't have enough dimes to take away 5, so that's where you go to the dollars, the $8, and you're going to have to borrow one from there to make that... 10 dimes. 10 dimes minus 5 dimes would be 5 dimes. Now in the dollars, right, you got $7 minus $9. Again, it's too big. We're going to just make this one into a full 17. 17 minus 9 will leave you with $8.53. Okay, so if you had $18.11, you spent $9.58 from some kind of purchase, you'd have $8.53 left over. You lower the temperature of your freezer by 9.2 degrees. It was originally set to negative 12 degrees Celsius. Write the symbolic expression that represents this problem. What is the new temperature of the freezer in degrees Celsius? So two parts, we got the expression. And again, it's, it's important to understand where you start with, okay? So you're gonna take your starting temperature, which um, it says it was originally, or that's what you would start with, temperature at negative 12 degrees Celsius. So I've got negative 12 degrees Celsius. I don't, I don't need a, the degree symbol there because I'm just writing the expression. And then it said you're going to lower that temperature. I would, I would say that's going to be a minus for me, although you could do a plus a negative, I suppose. I just don't know if the assignment would accept that. And then this is how much it was lowered by 9.2 degrees. So it's going to be lowered. by 9.2 degrees. And that's the expression that we would look for on this. Okay, so that, now we actually have to do this. So I would look at this and I'd say, is my answer gonna be positive or negative? Well, if you start with a negative and you're gonna take some more away, or you're gonna, you're gonna go, the minus means you're gonna go lower, that means that your answer will also be lower as a negative. So there's my negative symbol then all I'm going to do is take the 12 and I'm going to, I'm going to subtract what would be negative 12 minus 9 and 2 tenths. I'm going to make that 12.0 because what I'm going to end up doing is adding these two together. Now, why am I adding them together? 
Because you start with a negative, you're going to make something more negative. More negative means you're going to add the two together. So by adding these together in the tenths place value, 0 plus 2 is 2. There's my decimal. In the ones place value, 2 plus 9 is 11. Carry the 1. And then in the tens place value, 1 plus 1 is 2. So if I can fix that negative symbol. Is it, is it in Celsius? Correct. Yep, so it's negative 21.2 degrees. And then, yep, we'll be specific and put in a Celsius label on there. That's all we got right here. There's our objectives. I can add and subtract decimals. Of course, we saw some word problems. But you line up those decimals. Make sure you line up those decimals. After that, it's just back to the old rules, knowing if your answer is going to be positive or negative. If they're the same signs, you add them and then keep the sign. If they're opposite signs, you got to see which one's bigger, then take the big and minus the small.